got some really cool earrings to show you today. I actually originally developed these earrings for uh, the, the um, let's see, it's the South Florida Jewelry Arts Guild. That's a long name, so I always have to think about it. But uh, I did a, a presentation to their entire bead society there, and we made these earrings in their in the big group. There were probably about 70 people there, so it was quite a, a undertaking. But it was cool too because we had people who had never done bead weaving before, and they were able to get earrings done in the time frame of the meeting. So I thought that I would go ahead and share them with the rest of you guys. And so now not just South Florida, but we'll be rocking these earrings. Let's take a look at what we're doing. These are what I call my whirly gig earrings. And uh, the way that they're made is we're gonna create this, fl this flat piece of uh, right angle weave. Don't be afraid, uh, where it's just gonna be the most simple kind of right angle weave, just one, one pass of it. We add a larger bead on one side, we add a smaller bead on the other side, which kind of creates a curve, and then we create this whirly gig kind of design by adding the pearls down the center. And so that's, that's our plan for today. Here is how we're going to start out. Let me get these out of the way. We're going to start out just using some size 11 seed beads, and that's what I have here. Uh, I've at already attached a stopper bead to the end of this. You only need to use maybe um, about three feet of thread to make the entire earring, so don't go crazy with your fire line. And either a size uh, 10 or a size 12 needle will work for you. So when you start out with right angle weave with one bead per side here, we're going to pick up four beads. You're going to bring those down and pass through all four of those beads from your tail end back up again. That still doesn't turn it into a circle, you'll notice. You have like this little loop of thread going on here. So you wanna go from that tail end, keep going, go another two beads past. Okay, this guy doesn't wanna go through here. I'm gonna flip it so that I can get it on the proper side for me. So two beads past. And then I'm also going to go one more bead past that even. And the reason I did that is because now my tail thread is coming out one side of this section of four and my working thread is coming out the other side. And that's exactly what I wanted to happen because I know, now I know that this is where I started and I'm growing from the working thread side. When you do right angle weave, every time you add another set of beads, you have a one shared bead, at least on the first row, you'll just have one shared bead. So instead of picking up four beads from my next right angle weave unit, I'm only going to pick up three. You're going to pass back through that same bead that your thread is currently coming out of. You have to go in the side where there's no thread, otherwise your beads will just pull off the thread if you go in the other direction. So now I have the two right angle weave units going on here. The thing is, I want my thread to be on this outside edge so that I can grow it some more. So that means I have to keep going around the circle so that I can come out that outside edge bead. D don't be afraid to flip this. You can flip it over so that you can get through the beads as you need. It does not matter. So now, here I am and I'm not, I passed through two beads and now I'm coming out that outside edge bead again. Pick up another three beads. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we have 16 units. So here I am with my next three beads. I'm going back through the same bead that my thread is coming out of. I'm gonna flip it just so that I can get a better angle because now I need to go through the next two beads to get to that outside edge. Some people will tell you that you can go ahead and you go through those two beads at the same time. I prefer to go through them one at a time. I find that my little right angle weave units square up much better if I do that. So I, um, I don't take shortcuts in right angle weave. I'll add a couple more units here and then I'll show you how you were gonna count these units. So I'm picking up three, passing through the bead that I'm coming out of, flip it, Go through one, go through two. So I'm on the outside edge. Voila. And same thing here. 
And then when I get to this outside edge, I'll show you how we're going to count these. And through that outside edge bead. Okay, so you're going to be going along here and you're going to be go, you're going to fi try to figure out how many how many you have. The easiest way to count is you've got what I call the sticky outy beads on along each edge. Each one of those sticky outy beads represents one unit. So go ahead and count those. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got five units here. So you just want to keep adding your sets of three, getting to the outside edge, all the way until you have 16 total units. And then come on back to me and we will get to the second step of these earrings. So now you've got your 16 units and let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to do next and it's so easy you're just going to be like really that's it? So here's let's take a look at the beads. I've got my 16 units here. I've counted along the edge here. I'm coming out that outside edge seed bead and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now move one more seed bead around so that I am now coming out one of these sticky outies along the edge. And um, you might no have noticed when I was doing that, I kind of pulled it. There was a little bit of thread showing here. When you're tightening this, you want to tighten in the direction that the thread is moving through the bead. So if I tighten outward, which is everybody's kind of instinct, is to pull in their dominant hand direction, that actually opens up the space with the uh, thread showing. So if you actually pull and the direction that the thread is coming through the beads to tighten it up, then that sucks up all that thread. So that's just a little tip for you. So what I'm going to do here is what I call stitch in the ditch. Uh, the first time I heard this term was with Cynthia Rutledge. So I don't know if she, she came up with it or not, but that's who I learned it from. And all that, what that means is all I'm doing here is I'm going to pick up, in this case, a size 8 seed bead now. I've been using 11s for that base. Now I'm going to pick up a size 8. And I'm just going to pass through the next sticky outy seed bead. Because this is a bigger bead that I'm putting in this little intersection, and you're just going to do that all the way down. Just pick up a size 8, go through the next sticky outy. So by putting a bigger bead in these intersections, it's going to create a little curve in this piece. And uh, if you used seed beads for a while, then you know not all size 8 seed beads are the same size. It depends on what manufacturer you're using. So for some of you, this might be a very dramatic curve, depending on what seed bead you're using. For some of you, it might be a little more of a um, uh, not quite as dramatic curve. I'm sure there's a better term for that, but I'm concentrating on my beads. I just love these size 8s. They're so beautiful. They are a copper lined aqua. So as I'm doing this, you can kind of see that we're getting a little bit of a curve to this, a natural curve now. And I'm going to work this all the way down to the end. One of the things I like to do, because I like a very exaggerated curve, is I actually cherry pick my beads when I do this. So I'm actually looking for the ones that are a little bit thicker because these beads happen to not be super thick, size eights. So I look for the bigger ones. Okay, so this is my last size eight along this edge. Get Mr. Tail Thread out of the way there. And there you've got your curve. What we're gonna do now is just basically pull a U-turn and we're going through that bead on the edge. Get the tail out of the way. I like to put that tail in my hand so that I tuck it away. Come through the first sticky outy on this inside edge. And now on the inside edge, we're gonna pick up a size 15 seed bead this time. And that is also then going to exaggerate the curve because now we're picking up a smaller bead than the 11 pulling it tighter and that's going to give us more of a curve. So we'll do that all the way to the end.
One of the biggest things to look for when you're doing this is make sure that you, when you're do, putting your needle through the sticky outy bead, sometimes your needle will accidentally pick up the next sticky outy bead at the same time. So kind of keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for any looped threads. So sometimes, uh, because we do have you know beads that are sticking out, your thread can catch on them or catch around the end here, and uh, then you'll have thread showing on the outside of your earring, and then you'll be sad, and we don't like sad beaters. Okay, almost to the end here. These earrings work up so quickly too. You can make several pair in an e evening actually. So they're good for gifts, they're good for selling if you um, do craft shows. This would be a great thing to do for those. I have people who email me all the time asking me permission to make things for um, auctions, charity auctions. Um, I always allow you guys to do, to sell these pieces, to do them as auctions. All right, so now look. Look how, how big that curve is now that we've added those 15s in there. So now we have got one more step to do to finish the body of this earring, and that's gonna be to add our pearls. And let's see here, I am, oh, there's my pearl, I'd, my extra pearl, I'd used him as my stopper bead, there it is. So this is the part that is most confusing to people. I actually, what I have you do, pass through that that bead right on that tip again, so that you're coming through the bead on the tip. I actually have you come through the center hole of the set of four beads here on the, the, ins the edge. So you've got the four size 11s, you're actually gonna go right in the center of those four size 11s. You're not going through a bead, you're going through the center of the unit. So I have you pop through that center, you'll pick up a 15, I think you'll pick up a 15, and a pearl, and a 15. And then you're gonna count the number of units. Um, in this particular case, I count the centers. So uh, you wanna go through the fifth one past where you are. So don't count the one your thread's coming out of. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna pass through the center of that unit. and then it just pulls together right like that. Gonna do the exact same thing, pick up a 15, a pearl, and a 15. I am not counting the unit that I'm coming out of. Oh, we're getting to the point where I've gotta put the glasses on. Okay, I'm not counting the unit that I'm coming out of, which is this one, and instead I am going one, oop, hello coming out of this guy. One, two, three, four, and there's five. And I'm just gonna pop my needle straight through the center. There we go. And we're starting to get our zigzag. We've got the last pearl to add. So a 15, a pearl, and a 15. And this time we don't have to count because we know that we're just gonna go through the very last unit, the center of that very last unit, like so. And there's our earring base. So once you get that accomplished, come on back and I'm going to talk to you about uh, ending your thread off and then how you're going to attach this to the ear wire. We've got just a couple of little things left to do for these earrings, and this is what we're looking at. We've gone ahead and added in those pearls along the edge. Now, this is a point of wear and tear because this is gonna have some flex to it. Um, it's also would be easy. There's only one line of thread right now going down the center of this. Actually, I guess I need to show it to you this way, uh, going down the center of this, and so, I think it's best to reinforce this before you go any farther. So the way I reinforce it is I'm coming out that center section there, and what I wanna do is actually pass through that tip seed bead again. 
That's a very useful little seed bead. And then I will pass through that center hole again of the, uh, the um, four beads of this right angle weave unit. And then I'm, uh, when I pass through that hole, I'm also gonna catch that size 15 seed bead, the pearl and the 15. And this is easier said than done. Okay, so I got the 15 there. You may have to take it one bead at a time to get your needle all up through there. Then through the 15, through the hole, and then you can look on the opposite side, go through the 15. Okay, got through the 15, through the pearl, through the 15 on the other end, which is around here somewhere. Yep, through the hole, then through the 15 on the next one, through the pearl, and then the, through the 15. I got lucky there, I got through a whole bunch of them at the same time. And then last but not least, through that center section again. And to anchor it, pass through that little tip guy. So at that point, now you've got two passes of thread through here, and you'll actually feel it tightening up as you do that. It'll make a huge difference in your earring. When we go to attach this to an ear wire, what I like to do is attach it straight from this little tip seed bead that we're already coming out of. I pick up six of my size 15 seed beads, four, five, six, and then I don't attach it directly to the ear wire. And the reason why is no matter what kind of ear wire you're using, I've got several different kinds here. This is um, a lever back and this is uh, just a little French hook, but there's always going to be a, um, an opening where you, you normally would attach, say, wire, if you were did done a wire wrap loop or something, there's always gonna be an opening there. And because we're using such a fine thread, I'm always concerned that that thread is gonna find that opening and pop out and then your earring will fall off. So what I do instead is I use a little four millimeter closed jump ring. And the difference between a regular jump ring and a closed jump ring is that a closed jump ring has been soldered shut. So where they've made that cut to make the jump ring, they've gone ahead and soldered it. So there is no opening on a closed jump ring. And the other thing that I like about using the closed jump ring is then uh, you get a really nice movement to your piece. In this case, I'd used uh, some larger jump rings here. I've, I've now gone down to a four millimeter, but then you get a metal to metal connection when it's moving and it's just a, uh, I think it just moves really nicely when you use the jump ring. So what we're gonna do is we've picked up those six 15s and then we're gonna pick up that closed jump ring and then pass through that tip seed bead again, like so. And then that jump ring will just move nicely uh, along that little loop. My rule of thumb is anywhere there's a clasp, I wanna reinforce it at least uh, two more times. So three passes of thread total. So what we would do here is just pass through those six 15s again. I usually have to take them three at a time, three on one side, three on the other. three, and another three, and back through the loop. I'm gonna live dangerously and, and uh, only do one passive reinforcement, but do as I say and not as I do, and go ahead and, and do another one for yourself. Because now I wanna show you how I would end this thread off. And uh, the answer is there's, there's, a lot of, of loose area in here. And so rather than just weaving back and forth on this particular project, I do like to tie knots. And so I'm just gonna find a little spot where I've got thread already attaching beads together. I pull, I, I loop under that thread. I pull down so I've got a little loop left on this working thread and then I pull through the loop. And when I pull through the loop, I wanna make sure that it's all closing down in that same intersection. I do not want it to 
loop over a bead because then your thread will show over that bead. So I close down nice and slow and I control it and there, now I've got that, that knot knotted in there nicely. Then I move another couple beads away and do the same thing. My rule of thumb is two to three knots when I'm doing this. So loop under the thread that's already there. I swear there's one there. There we go. The smaller this loop is when you go through it, the less likely it is to prematurely knot on you. So go ahead and, and make that nice and small. Make sure that it's all sitting in that same intersection. There we go. And then pull nice and slow so that you can catch it if it starts being a problem before you've all of a sudden tightened it down and then you're trying to get it out. And then I never cut off right where my knot is. I always move another couple beads away. Now I can cut that off and that is ready to go. And then you'll just take your, normally we take your flat nose pliers. I'm gonna kind of manhandle this and open this loop up. There we go, oops. Maybe I won't, hang on one sec. Okay, these are round nose pliers, but they'll work. So, open that loop up. Pop your jump ring in there, your closed jump ring. Close that loop, and there we go. Your earring is ready to go. And you actually have some options. Um, I tend to put these on the earring so that the size eight seed bead portion of the earring shows. But if you like the size 15 side a little bit better, you can certainly pop that forward. More options for you. You don't have to make it quite this long. You can make them shorter. This particular earring I did with only two of the pearls. So some of you ladies who might be a little more petite uh, might need a slightly smaller piece here. And then the other question that I get asked quite often is, can I use crystals instead of pearls? And the answer is you betcha. So these are ones that I actually was wearing earlier. I unfrocked myself. And uh, so the crystals, the six millimeter crystals work just perfectly in this piece also. So that is our Whirly Gag earrings. And I hope you make a whole bunch of them. Um, and be sure and tell me that you like the earrings by pressing that little like button there and subscribe to the channel. And please feel free to come friend me on Facebook. Show me what you're making off of these videos. I love to see what you're doing. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Have fun. Thank you.